and this is something maybe I can do. One of the hardest groups for Trevor to reach are young people, many of whom see the church as not only out of touch, but tainted. For all sorts of reasons, in terms of the particular history, that religion was seen as a binding force for community in the formation of the Irish state, and so on. That's an artificial role, I think, for religion. Alternative meanings are on offer now through science, through the human intellect, through all sorts of explorations. So religion is now seen to be one of the options. And for many people, quite a discredited option because it's not cool, it's not fashionable. We've done that, that that's the past. What, if anything, can he do to inspire this lost generation and convince them that they have a place and a role in the church? He's visiting St. Anne's Community College in Killaloo, a co-educational school with over 500 pupils. It's quite scary, really. Uh, this is going to be very interesting because it's kind of a free-for-all, really. Um, and I'm sure I'll be, um, I, I might be asking the questions, but I, I feel as if I'm under ex as much examination as they are. So um, it's not going to be an examination. I hope it goes really well. You never know how it's going to work out, though, do you? I do. Good. The students have been told that Would You Believe is coming to talk to them about the relevance of religion in Ireland today. They're not aware that the reporter is a bishop. What I want to do now, actually, is, is actually, and I just want us to, at least to think of this for ourselves, okay. How many people here, you know, where it was a regular thing for you to go to church when you were very small? Vast majority of people, yeah. And how many people would still go regularly to church? Okay. What was the re main reason why you no longer find going to church something you want to do? It's boring. It's boring. It's really outdated. All the hymns and whatever, it's really kind of, I don't know, depressing in a way. You have to remember like all the stuff the priest did to like children and like adults growing up. Like that's obviously a, a huge factor why not as many people go to church. Do you think that means that people have lost their trust? Trust, exactly, yeah. Many of the students in the school are Roman Catholic, but to Trevor, that's not important. His challenge is how to make Christianity relevant to their lives. If you could reinvent church, right, what are the one or two things you say would be really important? I think it needs to be more accessible and open to everyone. Priests should be allowed to marry as well and like have a life, like we like get to have children and stuff like. Women should have more of a role as well. Communication. Communication. Yeah, between the priest and the people at mass. Do you feel at mass there's lack of a relationship? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Do you actually care about the church uh, and how it should reinvent itself or not? It helped me through a lot of things. Like, um, if I didn't have that, then I don't know, I don't know what I'd do. It doesn't matter. I wouldn't really care if the church wasn't there personally. I think I would certainly miss the comfort of it, you know, having something to turn to. I was really surprised, actually, by, by this morning. It was really a good experience. I enjoyed it. And the nice thing about it for me was that they enjoyed it too. It was kind of more open. I learned more about people in my class and what they believe, so it was cool. Trevor, I feel, is kind of, he's kind of more mellow. Like, he's really kind of respectful. I know I said respectful about three times a day. But um, he's really kind of, he wants to hear your opinions. I didn't expect it to be that fun, but it turned out to be good. It was nice hearing everyone's opinions on faith and everything in the church and just what people would do. I think what I've learned from the journey so far is that there are things that we need to do in the church to be relevant to the lives of young people. I'd really like them now to experience a new way of being church and see how they would respond to that. This is just a little, it's a bedroom actually, but we've just made a very temporary uh, chapel out of it. And uh, this is where I say the office in the morning. This is a very handy way of getting the prayer book ordered, 
sorted out quickly. I don't think this journey, and I, and I don't think essentially what I'm about is promoting the Church of Ireland. Um, I'm not a kind of, the, you know, managing director of the sales force, you know. It's something much more important, actually. Uh, I mean, I think um, I'm, <clears throat> I, I'm there to try in whatever, gosh, humble way I can, um, is, is to represent the good news that we, we found in the story of Jesus. Okay. <clears throat> Trevor is concerned about a growing phenomenon in his diocese. More and more men today are feeling isolated from their communities and families. I'm aware of some very good projects that are meeting some of the real issues of unemployment uh, and, and people who feel cast aside um, because they're, they're not in a job or don't have a career. Um, and I'd love to see how perhaps the church can learn from that experience. I um, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And what time are you kicking off at? Yeah, great. Michael Kavna, a rector in one of Trevor's Kerry parishes, is doing something about it. And Trevor wants to know more. They're not meant to know I'm a bishop, you know. I prefer to meet people just um, as they are. No, I'm not going to wear, I'm not going to wear a mite or bring my staff or anything like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, going to be, I'm just going to be an ordinary person. Okay, right, cheers, cheers, Michael. Bye, bye. Great. It's <laughs> a laugh. I am really hopeful that we will rediscover community, that we will actually start believing in what we can do together, that actually by coming together we can make small steps. If we get the confidence to do that, I think we're on the way. In Kenmare, Michael has brought together a group of local men to form a men's shed club in an adult education centre. This is a new venture and I, I'm really interested to see it and meet the people who are involved. <coughs> oh, so this is it. Great. Oh yeah. Well, There's a good, good number of people here. Great. The group knows it's playing host to a Would You Believe documentary, but has no idea that the new man in the shed is a bishop. John, hello, John. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Great, Trevor. My name is Trevor. The men's shed is part of a movement popping up all over the country. Their motto is, men talk shoulder to shoulder. Centred around practical activities, these clubs provide a gathering place for men to socialise and contribute to the community through various activities. Cheney. It looks better this side. Fine mortars, yeah. <laughs> the Kenmare Club has just started an ambitious boat building project. The Kenmare Curras. Yeah, well, it'll, it'll, it will be, it'll be a boat of its own design. Generally, a three-handed curra is about 19 and a half feet, and um, the boat we're going to make will be about 15 and a half. Uh, Fantastic. So. It's good because, you know what I mean, it keeps people's interest up and things like that, you know, because the place is kind of, you know, a lot of the work and things has dried up and all these type of places, you know what I mean, and it's a pity to lay a place, things, you know, close down altogether. You're a relative newcomer. This is only my third week here and uh, enjoying it immensely so far. Some people might say, Women are better at getting together and, you know, just having a chat and making friends than men. I just said, I suppose women react more at home and, you know, they're uh, within each other, where a man, man shedding, I suppose, is an old-fashioned way of thinking that men don't get together as, you know, meeting groups, whatever they want. That's not bad at all. You might find it easier to use a bigger chisel. I suppose when the church is involved in something like this, people are looking for an alternative motive for why you're doing it. Are you trying to get more bums on the seats uh, in your church by doing this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, I, I think that that would be uh, a, a, a almost deceitful 
in, in the same way. I mean, we hear stories of uh, people offering soup for conversions. That's scurrilous. Uh, this, I think, is just being a part of the community. Certainly, if people wanted to talk about, about God, if people wanted to talk about the faith, then, then fine. This, this here is, is not the one they're building. Because this has got flared guns, oh, you know. I found it quite moving, actually. And the main thing that that came across to me was hope. Hope uh, in the individuals that I, I spoke to, because they all felt they were contributing to a project. They loved being together. And they saw that um, this was something they really were committed to. In areas like this, uh, where there's a lot of loneliness, a lot of isolation, people unemployed, as, as they talked about, um, to have something as riveting and as energising as this is fantastic. For me, that's a, a real example of what the Church of Ireland can contribute, even though we're very small in numbers, um, even we don't have a lot of resources to offer, but we do have people with ideas, and maybe that's all it takes sometimes for community to work and to develop. I did that, yes. I did a mortise yeah. on this. We'll, we'll yes. make a note. Before make a note, that. Yeah, absolutely. Just <laughs> With a <the> little cross there. <laughs> this journey for me has been like a retreat, but a retreat into the world instead of a retreat out of the world. It's to relearn, really you know, what we are about as church, uh, and I'm learning a huge amount about that. Um, I think the danger for people like me uh, at the centre of the church's life is that, is that the church becomes our life and we forget the reason why we exist and that is to be a bridge, if you like, of God's love. Next week on Bishop Undercover, Trevor looks for a solution to the dwindling numbers in his church by paying a call to Limerick's Abundant Life Centre where it's standing room only. Some of our normal Church of Ireland people just coming in here might find this a little bit off-putting. So let's welcome Bishop Trevor Williams. And as Trevor returns to the people who have inspired him, he has to come clean about his real identity as he tries to inspire them. Hey, brilliant. Nice to see you again. Everybody's here, it's fantastic. Hi, the whole, Hi. The whole nice crew. Again. With no magic wand or millionaire's checkbook, can he convince people that a Church of Ireland bishop still has something to offer them? Did you know we had a bishop in the kitchen all morning with us? A bishop? Where? <laughs> a bishop? Yeah, that's what. <laughs> Your surname is Bishop. No! no. <laughs>you can indeed see that next Sunday at 10.35 here on RTE1. Well, in a change to some listings tonight, the week in politics follows the break, and then at 20 to 12, we bring you Clonas live from Christchurch Cathedral with special guest Brian Kennedy.